All these stunts done in this video are done by semi-professionals but if you're not one please check your work one two three four a hundred times because you're working with AC voltages and it can give you a little bit of shock and it could be fatal too. Having said that, uh, wait a minute, let me cue in the intro video. How do you do anything if you don't give it a try? Just be careful with whatever you do and please use some common sense. All the main lines in your home are done using 2.5mm cable. It is capable of handling large appliances. If you understand it right, it's the same 2.5mm cable that is used in your home to power up your fan, light, computer, refrigerator all at once. So it is capable and designed to handle such heavy loads. I'm going to use the same 2.5mm cable in the extension box. I've done this before and constructed many extension boxes to power up my studio lights and it consumes a lot of current because of the high flash rating of these studio lights. So if anybody is here to give me negative comments, thank you for your concern but I really know what I'm doing. Let's look at the parts required. This is the raw cutout of a switch box. I've already made sure that uh, the shopkeeper cuts all these sockets. So this is the space for a switch, then a 3-pin socket, switch, 3-pin socket and so on. And here in the middle there will be an indicator which will show if the switches are live or not. All these are the different types of switches. I am using 6 ampere rating switches and sockets. Here are 3 different colored wires. The red will be for the live wire, the black will be for the neutral and blue I will be using it for the earth. Although it's not necessary to use three different colors, it just makes life easier to understand which one is what. So here are the three different colors. Three core 2.5 ampere cable. This will be connected to the extension board and at the end I will connect 6 ampere plug. And finally here's the plug. It's rated for 6 amperes, 240 volts and it's a 3 pin plug. Let's go ahead and see how to put this together. So let me fit it here. Oh, I missed it. I put the orientation wrong. But the logo is here and the logo is up there so I need to rotate this. Something to, that you have to note. I love how the sockets are made of wood. I've made many sockets which are made of wood and then they are very sturdy and very strong. You can put them to a lot of abuse and still they hold up very tight. Here's my homemade 3D printed screwdriver which I'm going to use. This has just, you know, sockets at the back which I designed so that I can put the other bits which I usually normally use. Now put the gap properly, hold it in place and then just tighten it up. So here's every socket and switch fit and this is how it looks. Now let me explain you a little bit of how the connection goes. I'm just going to take a pencil and shade light over it because I'm sure that you will not be able to see white over white. So that's neutral, that's live and here is the ground. I'm going to start by connecting all the earth lines together using this blue wire. I'm going to cut this blue wire into these lengths and then strip them and then screw them into the terminals. I screw in the blue wire into designated screw terminals. All the connections are made in parallel. Here you can see them connected from one socket to the other. I pull the wire a bit to see if it is all connected properly. Now I take this black wire and will connect all the neutral together in each socket. And here is all the neutrals connected in parallel. With the red wire I will connect all the switches together. The other terminal of the switch will be connected to the designated socket. Here you can see me connecting just one terminal of the switch in parallel. The other terminal of the switch is connected to the remaining live wire screw terminal of the socket. With the connections made, let's move to the cable. I will first connect the wire to the plug. I measure the length required and try to remove the insulation. 
Here I cut the wire a little deep and it has ruptured the earth wire. So I trim it off and start over again. Something that I wanted to show you so you can be more careful. Apply less pressure with the knife and then with force we can peel off the insulation. Once all the three wire insulations are stripped, I open the plug to connect it to the terminals. The earth is connected to the top. The plug has markings in them showing which lead is live and neutral, so connect the wires accordingly. This reddish strip at the bottom helps hold the wire in place, so tighten it up as much as required. After checking connections one last time, I close the black cover of the plug. Just wanted to take a quick minute out here to let you know that I upload project videos every week. I try to explain these videos in detail and give you out projects that you can use in your daily life. So please subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Also follow me on Instagram at MrJCRP to know what I'm working on right now and the future projects. At the end of this video, I'll have links to other interesting projects, so please check that out. Okay, now back to the video. To insert the 3 core cable, I drill a 8mm hole. I run the wire through and at the end, I coil some insulation tape so that the wire does not run back again through the hole. I connect the neutral wire to the light indicator. Because it's AC voltage, there is no positive or negative on the light indicator. You can connect any lead on either terminal. I repeat the same step for the live wire too. From the indicator, I connect the live wire to the switch terminal which is connected in parallel with all the switches. For the earth wire, I just bend it and connect it to the nearest terminal. With that, all the connections are done. Because the indicator is the first point of contact from the extension cable, we will always know if we are receiving power or not when the indicator glows. When I turn on the power, you can see the indicator glow up. Here I connect the terminals from a multimeter to check if all is working. When I turn on the switch, the multimeter reads 240 volts. That's a good sign. I tested all the sockets in a similar way. With that, the project is completed. Hope you liked it.